Seattle, Washington, the Ballard Siphon Project is working to replace a 77-year-old wooden sewer line beneath the Lake Washington Ship Canal. In service since 1935, King County's Ballard Siphon carries up to 60 million gallons of wastewater each day underneath the Ship Canal from North Seattle to the West Point Treatment Plant in Magnolia. When complete, the project will increase system reliability while helping to control combined sewer overflows during heavy rain, helping to protect water quality in the Ship Canal and Salmon Bay. The specifications for the job said it had to be an EPB uh, TBM. We chose a Heron Connect EPB TBM. The biggest challenge about this project was the diameter of the machine. It wasn't that great and the thickness of the segments, so that gave us very little room to work within the machine itself. The segments that lined the tunnel, the six pieces, were essentially very thick for this size machine. We expected one hour cycles. We wanted to be able to mine our ring uh, in 30 minutes and then set the ring in 30 minutes and we, we accomplished that. We were pretty happy with it. The ground conditions are very challenging. Uh, they started out in what we call slick and slided deposits, which are hard clays, and they transitioned into interglacial deposits, which are loose sands and gravels and uh, much more and, and with cobbles and some boulders. And, uh, it was a mixed cutter head. It had uh, regular uh, rock teeth on it as well as uh, roller cutters. We were fairly deep below the ship canal, so we were under about three and a half bar of pressure. And the machine wasn't set up for interventions. We would, we would, it didn't have, wasn't equipped with an airlock. If an intervention would have been required, we would have had to install an airlock, and, which we didn't have to do. The 145-foot deep TBM launch pit was built using a Heron Connect VSM, or vertical shaft machine the first time a vertical shaft machine was used in North America. When you get to shafts over 100 feet, your, your options are limited usually to ground freezing or slurry wall. This was kind of a, a third option that we were never had available to us before. We think it's a huge advantage in an urban environment. It, it makes a very small footprint and works very, very well. The speed at which we did it was just absolutely remarkable. Once we learned how to use the machine, once we learned the technology, it, it became a lot of fun. You could just physically see the progress every day. The machine offered us an overcut so that when we poured the underwater trimmy, we weren't faced with having to do a lot of lock-in with dowels and rebar. Our shaft was 150 foot deep. If it had it been 250 feet, uh, we just would have kept adding the precast rings to it and we just would have kept on going down. Uh, I've been doing this for uh, about 35 years, and that's the best shaft that uh, I've ever seen put in. The tunnel is complete, and crews are installing the 85-inch fiberglass reinforced liner pipe inside of the segmented tunnel liner. The project is expected to be complete in early 2014. In Seattle, Washington, this is Sterling Noreen reporting for TunnelTalk.com.